The 1970 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am was a sweet looking car, and its looks are even more impressive because there are good aerodynamic devices on the car and bad ones. For example, the rear spoiler is a great one, while the blocky front probably isn't. Then on top of that, there are some features that may or may not be that aerodynamic, like the shaker hood scoop. So how aerodynamic was the Trans Am overall? In this video, we simulated at 20 meters per second, which is about 45 miles per hour. And we'll look at how all these features performed and why, and then what the drag coefficient and downforce production came out to be. Let's first look at the front because how the air flows around that greatly affects how aerodynamic the rest of the car can be. If the flow is good, then that gives the downstream sections more to work with. And because the front is so blocky, there is potential for bad aerodynamics here. In this cut plane, going right down the center of the Firebird, we see the velocity plots. Blue is 0 meters per second, and red is 20, or 45 miles per hour. And actually, the flow right over the top of the hood is quite good. There is no flow separation or wake from it, so right here, if we look at the drag orbit, we can see that no drag is produced. The only downside to this part is that the flow accelerates quite a lot. It's over 30% faster, and that comes with lower pressure, so the hood is being pulled up here and making the car lighter at the front. For those interested, this simulation was done with open foam. If you want to learn open foam, then check out our courses here. We have an Easter sale on that you might like. So let's get back to this simulation. So far, we've only looked at the very center of the car. What if we go to the side, even by a couple feet? In this cut plane, we now see a major problem. While the floor was really nice over the very center, it's terrible here. It separates and creates a huge wake. In this drag orbit, we can see so much drag being produced by it, and the problems don't stop there. The wake from this lip flows right into the windshield, and in this drag orbit, we see additional drag being produced here too. It should be noted that this additional drag is also because of how upright the windshield is. The flow hits it and has to rush around the edges, and that creates more drag too. If we look at the pressure in this plane, we still get low pressure here too, so this region is just bad all round. But why do we get so much flow separation over this hood? Well, it's largely because the tip is too straight. The flow hitting it is curved, and because it hits this very sharp and straight lip, it just separates. This region can be easily fixed by just rounding the tip down a little more so that it's more in line with the flow hitting it. Now, the top of the hood isn't the only bad bit at the front. The sides are also pretty bad. We get some separated flow here, as you can see by this slight blue region, that also results in drag production. So it's clear that the front is pretty bad and that spoils the flow hitting the windshield and creates a lot of drag over all these regions. But the Trans Am has some pretty good features around here too, like the front chin strap slash spoiler slash air dam. This feature was pretty advanced back when this car was designed and in these early evolutions, it was there to guide the flow around the car and the wheels and to reduce how much flow goes underneath the car. In this case, the spoiler is also blended into the wheel spoilers, as we can see here in this plane. And they do a really good job directing the flow around the front wheels. You can see that the front wheel wakes are really small actually, and they're actually a lot smaller than a lot of modern cars. With that comes reduced drag too, because in this drag orbit, while we can see a quite a bit of drag being produced at the front wheels, once again, it's not as much as a lot of cars these days. This is even more impressive when you look at just how small the wheel is compared to the wheel house. There's a lot of room around the wheel, which is bad for drag. Ideally, you want the wheel to take up as much of this wheelhouse volume as you can. So we have quite a lot of wheelhouse volume and still quite low drag. So this spoiler really does a great job managing the flow around the wheel and drag production. But while it's really good for the front wheels, it's not great in the middle of the car because we can see just how much drag is produced here. The flow goes underneath it, separates, creates a huge wake, and drag. And while this is all bad for drag, looking at the pressure, it's actually really good for downforce because you can see just how low the pressure is underneath and behind it. Now, the front wheels aren't the only ones with wheel spoilers. The rear wheels have them too, and again, they do a great job. They direct the flow around the wheels and hence reduce how much drag is produced from them. But they go even one step further. In this figure, you can see how the flow really wraps around the wheels and shoots underneath the car. That dramatically reduces the wake size, and in this drag orbit, we can see just how little drag is produced. 
so the front and rear wheel spoilers are working really well. Let's now move back to the hood, but to the shaker hood scoop. The reason why I'm so interested in this is because it's backwards. So it's not a ram scoop because air isn't being rammed into the front of it. Instead, it's taking air from around the windshield region. And as such, the pressure of the flow entering the scoop will be lower. But how does this protrusion in the hood affect the flow? And does it help the windshield flow? From this plane, honestly, I think it's pretty bad. It creates quite a large wake after it, and the flow is still very slow even above it. But the surprising thing is that if this were a modern car, it would definitely increase the drag. But for this Firebird, because the windshield is so upright to begin with, the scoop isn't that bad because it now reduces the flow speed hitting the windshield, and so the high pressure we get on it reduces. With that, the drag also drops. And in this drag orbit, we can see that the scoop doesn't produce much drag either. So I'm not sure if the designers knew that, or if it was just a happy coincidence. Either way, here, this typically bad scoop is actually pretty good still. Looking from this top view, you can see just how much air has to flow around the sides of the windshield instead of over it. So you have all this air crashing into it, decelerating and creating high pressure. That high pressure is pushing the car back and increasing the drag. But on a positive note, that high pressure also helps push the car down into the road for more traction. Now, one thing that seems trivial, but actually is a pretty good design is the side mirrors. They're pointy at the front and quite small. So you get relatively small wakes out of them. I mean, there are quite large wakes here, but they're actually smaller than most modern cars still. A reason for that is the change in design philosophy between then and now. Back then, making the side mirrors sleek and having their wakes hug the sides of the car was good because it reduced the drag. Now, however, while that would still reduce the drag, it also dirties the windows faster because the debris that hits the side mirrors flows into the windows and gets deposited there. So these days, mirrors are designed so their wakes flow away from the car, which keeps the car cleaner longer, but increases the drag. We now get to perhaps the best feature of this car, the fastback design. You can see how well the roof is blended into the rear window and then down the trunk. That clean sweeping geometry is very easy for the flow to follow, and that's why we get no separation here. We do get very low pressure over the front of the roof because the flow had to accelerate so much, but once you get halfway down the rear window, something really unexpected happens. We actually get very high pressure. For a sweeping rear like this, that shouldn't happen. It should be very low pressure instead. The reason why we get this high pressure is actually because of the rear spoiler. Looking at the flow, you can see that just before the rear spoiler, there's a lot of slow moving fluid that just circulates around. That very slow flow is just occupying this volume and pushing back on the upstream flow. As a result, Oncoming air has to decelerate a little too, and that means it dumps some of its energy and creates higher pressure. In fact, this rear spoiler design was cutting edge at the time, and even today, modern NAS cars use the same principle. They have very steep rear spoilers that trap the air in front and creates high pressure upstream. That then pushes the car into the road for more grip. Here, the high pressure at the back pretty much cancels out the high pressure at the front. What's even more surprising to me is that Despite having such a large and imposing rear spoiler, the wake is still really small. I mean, you have just this mass just sticking up into the flow, and yet you still don't get a big wake behind it. And looking at the drag, relatively little is produced here too. How? There are two main reasons. The first is that the diffuser is fantastic. It's good by even modern standards. It first of all makes the rear face tiny, which means that the low pressure behind it only acts on a small surface, so the drag drops. But the diffuser also directs the flow up very nicely, which further reduces the wake size. The other reason why the wake is so small is because the rear sides of the car sweep in a little. That helps direct the flow into the wake more and reduce its size too. So what does the drag coefficient come in at? It comes in at 0.39. That's not great by modern standards, especially considering all the good aerodynamic features of this car. But it's this high largely because of the bad front, chin spoiler, and very upright windshield. If you fix those, the drag coefficient could easily drop to the low threes. And the Trans Am also has a large rear spoiler, which while it's great at producing downforce, that also comes with its own drag penalty. So removing that could push the drag coefficient below 0.3. As for the downforce production, 
it produces 0.5 kilos of lift, which makes it almost neutral. Peace out, amigos.